So hello everybody, uh, welcome. Hello. I'm the Rom, I'm the Rom Reverend. Uh, we are live uh, today uh, with the second episode of Caribbean Rom Chronicles. Um, today, uh, the first week, we talked a little bit about our own personal experiences, and uh, we hope you enjoyed that one. And I hope those of you who have, who log in today um, will uh, enjoy today's, and I think you will because we have some fascinating discussions about the rum punch um rum punch probably be is the iconic cocktail of the caribbean it is the one cocktail that is served pretty much right across the region in the caribbean and has been has been served historically for a significant period of time um, and generally we mentioned last week that um, caribbean people don't consume cocktails in the same way um that uh, uh people outside of the Caribbean drink rum. Um, uh, but the one cocktail that we probably can't stake claim to drinking on a regular basis is probably the rum punch. And um, it's commonly served at parties and, uh, uh, and, and all sorts of venues, um, sometimes as a welcome drink, sometimes as a, uh, as a regular, uh, generally in any bar you go to, they'll always have a rum punch. Um, and, and I want to start off this week by uh, talking about um, a little bit about the history of the of the punch, um, and then once we talk a little bit about the history of the punch, if you've got any questions, uh, hello Ben, hello Keegan. If you have any questions, you always fire them away on the board, and we'll try and answer them uh, as quickly as we can. Uh, after we talk about the history of the punch, we will then talk about what we call traditional rum punches served across. The, the region in the Caribbean, um, and generally how rum punches are made across the different territories. And then uh, to finish off, we have a very interesting uh, selection. I have about 15 different cocktails from various venues uh, within the Caribbean of each individual's venue's twist on, on the cocktail. Um, so before I kick off today, uh, we are joined uh, by our usual panel and, and, and co-hosts. We have Emmanuel Ferris Hugh. Um, uh, he's technically the only professional bartender in, on, on the panel. Um, uh, everybody on the panel is, has a, are selected for having Caribbean heritage, but also uh, primarily of, of having spent time in the Caribbean. Um, Emmanuel has a mixture between Jamaica, Antigua and Barbados. Is that correct, Emmanuel? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, and say hello to everybody, please. How are you doing, guys? Yeah, nice all to right. See you again. Uh, we, secondly, and not in any particular order, we have Lizette Davis, who is the only one of us that is not residing in the cold climate of the of, of where the rest of us are, and she's actually lives in the Caribbean, in, in sunny Grenada, and um, she uh, runs a great venue. I've stayed there myself personally, called Vumbo Retreat. I uh, don't know if she describes it as a guest house. Is that a fair description? Yeah, yeah absolutely right. Um, and it specializes, by the name you can tell, it specializes in rum at the bar. So she has an amazing collection of rums at the bar. And Lizette also uh, does master classes on rum, um, especially in her home country of Grenada. Say hi, Lizette. Hey, hi, everyone. <laughs> Thanks. Right. Man. So, and then next, um, we have the rum doctor. His name yeah. is actually, his name is actually Kelvin. Uh, we're not sure if he's cured anybody any of any illnesses <laughs> yet. <laughs> a few, a few um, people got the remedies, so they're, they're good, they're good, they're happy in this, uh, in this um, COVID times. Uh, Kelvin's, uh, Kelvin's background is, is more mixed probably than anybody. So you've got from French Guiana, uh, Curacao, and where else have I missed off? It's Curacao, it's Jamaica. There's Jamaica. St. Lucia. There you go. Uh, he's so. been a busy. He's been a busy man over his life, and yeah. um, <laughs> uh, so he has a wide variety of Caribbean culture within him. He's the he's the one person that's not of the, from the English Caribbean, so he gives us a little bit of diversity and a different perspective. And he uh, he is speciality is actually um, infusing rums with different fruits and spices and creating some wonderful recipes, which is. As you, as many people may know, in the Caribbean, it was a very traditional way of home blending 
uh, spiced and fruit rums in the Caribbean. So say hi, Kelvin. Hello, everybody, and thanks for having me on board. Okay, so just to um, kick off, Pauline, hello, how are you doing? Um, no, this won't be two hours, Keegan. Um, if you looked at the post, we're, we're an hour and a half today. So um, so you'll, you'll, uh, you've got a little more time afterwards to do whatever you need to do. Uh, but after the, we get going, I'm sure you'll want to listen to it longer. Hello, Ruben. So we'll talk a little. I'm going to make some brief comments about the history of the punch, which will surprise many people who aren't uh, students of, of, of alcohol and the punch. But the first recorded record of the punch dates back to 1632. And that was in India, in Bengal, where Robert Adams uh, wrote of a punch being consumed in Bengal. Um, at that point in history, the East India Company, which was a commercial operation that um, uh, sort of effectively colonized India way before the British did. The East India Company was a British company, but they were commercially orientated to trade in spices and a number of other produce. I apparently reputed the opium as well. Um, why not? Because it was a very valuable commodity. Um, and there, there's a rather interesting history that um, they took the, the punch from India. Uh, the English claim they invented the drink and brought it to the Caribbean. Um, but there are records to indicate that the Indians were already consuming uh, a, 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 a concoction called punch, primarily for medicinal reasons. And punch in India uh, is a Sanskrit word which is, means five. And that five related to the ingredients of sweet, sour, strong, weak, and spice. And back in India, the weak would normally be tea. Yes, tea. Um, uh, and, uh, and if you can imagine those ingredients for medicinal purposes, the citrus was for scurvy, the spices helped your immune system and things like tummy problems. Um, the sugar made it more palatable. Uh, the rum makes you feel nice. Uh, and the weak would dilute it and stretches the drink. Um, I can move forward in 1647 to 1650 uh, in Barbados, a man named Richard Ligon, who has been noted for giving the word rum to, to the drink. He mentions punch in a document, but he makes no reference to the drink. However, in 1668, William Willoughby, who was a governor of Barbados and the Leewards, reported bowls of punch being drunk by the English and the French. Um, we can move forward just to show how international the punch became. In 1670 to 1671, John Parker reported drinking punch in Maryland, USA. And this would also be a good time to lead you into is that back historically, the punch back then was only drank by the middle and the upper class. It was not a poor man's drink. Um, and you could see moving on to 1691, Will's, Will's Coffee House in London served punch. And 1732, the famous London Coffee and Punch House in Ludgate Hill served punch to patrons, which included many dignitaries, politicians included. Um, and just to finish off, uh, rum was not the only alcohol uh, used in punches. Um, so rum... Uh, doesn't take claim to it. The original punch from India. Um, what was the alcohol? I know all of you guys should know. Manny? Arak. It'll be Arak. Is, yeah. It would have been Arak. Uh, does anybody else want to comment on what Arak was made from? I leave, uh, leave it to the bartender. <laughs> Arak was made from a, from cane, but also it was there was a coconut sap as well. So the, right like a yeah. powerful it was very strong it was a high abv was and like, actually some of the islands made uh, arak from rice as well yeah rice as well red rice yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah from red rice so so arak was the ingredient used but i mean later on as as it was exported uh, to the west i mean we there were other spirits used brandy was used gin was used whiskey was used fortified wines were used and um we'll talk about one particular punch later uh, we can we, there was one, we won't talk about it later on because it wasn't a Caribbean punch, but there's a famous rum punch called the Fish House Punch. Um, oh. And the Fish House Punch had in many. It's a cognac, apricot brandy, uh, lemon, and tea. Sometimes champagne as well. Right. 
Yeah. Right. So just to give you an idea of the other spirits used. And any any of you guys want to comment on history? Anybody no. want to mention any? Yeah. Well, it's, it's, you know, I mean, you, you, you covered most of the main 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 parts anyway. Um, mm. Yeah. Well, so, it's interesting. One thing is that it's interesting that is that punch is like an amalgamation of all of the the things from the trade routes. They all come together and create this one product, which mm. is why it was so expensive because it was so difficult to get all of these products. So in the when it was being drunk with the British aristocracy, it would have been something of like uh, pride to be to be drinking punch because everything mm. is so expensive. Mm. I, I will just add as well, actually, Manny, that from a lot of the reading of some of the punches that I found in Grenada, um, there wasn't a lot of um, juices like what we're finding in the urban or the, the new the new contemporary style, style um, punches. They would use fresh fruit, and if we did that, then things like the bitters and sugar and just the lime juice would have been out. Um, yeah. and it, was, it was almost no energy in syrup and things like that. And, 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 and Manny, would it be fair to say, I mean, this is a bold statement. Um, mm. No, it's not a bold statement. But the punch could be considered one of the early cocktails in history and, and the precursor to the cocktail industry. Well, it, pre it really predates uh, cocktails as we know it because the punch existed and existed in and outside of bars, but it wasn't something that depended on the, uh, being produced within a bar. And cocktails were essentially that's when bar culture created. So the punch predates bar culture almost. Yeah. Right. And 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 that and, and when you think about that balance of ingredients, when we talked about sweet, sour, strong, weak, and spice, um, mm. you begin to understand uh, that's the sort of basis of developing cocktails. Would you not say? Yeah. I mean, yeah. The the idea of balancing drinks in that way, or even understanding balance, it kind of lays a foundation for the ideas that would have been adopted by bartenders going forward. You know, they draw from those because that's all they would have had to draw from. You know, right? But but is, are there are there still are there still like debates in terms of where the actual word punch came from? Because a lot of people say it comes from a Hindi word, which means five. Yeah. But, but I, are, are they are they like accurate? like information that that is exactly where it came from or is it from a different source? Because I find it interesting because there's very many different articles that you read that say that oh, it comes from back in the days when they, when they used to serve it in barrels. The mm. barrel signifies like a, a punch bowl. Punch or punch. Yeah. Or yeah. punch yeah. So yeah, yeah. And they, a lot of people saying, okay, it may have derived from that way of serving the drink rather than the word. So right. I've, I've always wondered like, okay, what is the actual true... I, I think as well, I think one comment I could make there is that I think historically, and you've got to think about, we're, we're dating, we're going back to the 17th century. So unlike modern day, written records weren't as accurate as they are in, in the modern day. And I think when I do research on, on drinks, cocktails and the spirit industry, there is an amazing amount of conjecture. Who invented what? Who originated what? Mm. Are they li are they lying for commercial reasons or for or they wanted personal credit? Um, but I think on a whole, I think majority of people uh, would probably say, regardless of all the different versions, that uh, punch came from the Sanskrit word in India for five. And I think yeah, yeah. that's and I think that's probably um, the most co agreed uh, likelihood is where it came from. Yeah, that's the most that's the most common thing you see when you read any particular any article regarding punch or punch history. That's the first thing that comes up, you know, and it makes you understand that it has it, it makes it comes from an element of five. Yeah, uh, yeah. A, can I can I just quickly introduce to uh, uh, viewers that Mark Woods has just joined us. Um, uh, how you doing, Mark? He's um, uh, Mark uh, runs a operation called Rumbling. It's a mobile bar service that specializes in rum cocktails. And he does a variety of events uh, nationally across the UK. And um, Mark, uh, most majority of the time, I think most of his cocktails are created by himself. I'm sure he gets a bit of help from some of the bartenders, but takes all the credit. Um, <laughs> no, that's <laughs> Uh, but, uh, but say hi to the audience, Mark, please. Hello. Yes. So, uh, on the on the subject of punch, I suppose um, as a rum bar, 
and because technically what we sell is holiday or ex experiential kind of taking people to a holiday place when they come to an event. Um, most people think of Rum Punch when they're on holiday. So as such, I felt that our Rum Punch was kind of a critical drink for us. And in fact, it was probably the first the first proper drink that we we'd had that that would stand out, and I can't take credit for the the, the method. In fact, it was uh, a fellow Trinidadian friend of mine, Bruce Devire, who introduced yeah, yeah, me. Yeah, I met him. I met him, Bruce. To, um, the the idea of uh, Olio Sakarama and what that I had never heard of that until I did an event with Bruce and Bruce made one. And I'd never had a rum punch taste like that ever. And I'd had rum punch before. And it was kind of taken going down that that rabbit hole that that made me, you know, kind of wonder why the why the why the rum punch was kind of treated with such scant courtesy um at home or only as a Christmas drink. I shouldn't say at home, in some Caribbean islands, it's just a juice thing. Other places is only a Christmas drink. You know, people will literally only make it for Christmas and have it when their family come around. Um, it's not something that's used a lot. But for us, it, uh, for me, as as kind of, as part of what Rumbling is, our rum punch is, is, is the genesis. I mean, it is the, literally, without it, I, we wouldn't be doing anything because the rum punch is kind of what, stood out as a really unique drink to start with. So I have I've I've great respect for 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 punch. I I love a rum punch. I, I love my rum punch. Um and I think that more people should should love rum punch. <laughs> All right. Well good at this point in time so we can move ahead because we are limited to an hour and a half. I want to start off by talking about traditional punches um, within the various islands and um, I've deliberately started with Jamaica because uh, I'm the host and, and therefore and it's my it's my island my country so I don't see why I shouldn't but I also think it's um, it's important to start off with Jamaica for one particular reason um, and let's see if I can come up with um, uh, with one of those reasons and um, you can see on your screen there um, that this is the, the reason. Now, um, if you read historically um, in relation to the planter's punch, um, mm. the, there are records that said it was created in 1878, um, but there are also intimations that it was commonly consumed in Jamaica in the 1700s. Um, it is one of the, uh, the early recipes that probably um, put that formula into perspective um, and that was the formula of one of sour, two of sweet, three of strong, four of weak, and a little bit of spice to make it nice. Um, and the planter's punch was fundamentally, um, uh, uh, was water, was sorry, rum, lime, sugar, and water. And, uh, and back in the 1700s, it would have probably been something like nutmeg um, sprinkled on the top of it because Angostura bitters would not have been available as early as that in history as yet. Um, and what I give here is uh, on, that you can see on the on the screen are two recipes uh, dated back to two famous venues in Jamaica that served the planters punch. And uh, the you can see they've adjusted that formula because it, a lot of people felt that one of sour, two of sweet, three of strong, and four of wheat wasn't balanced. Um, but they've adjusted the formula to suit themselves. And if you look at the second one, which is the planters punch in, can you guys see that clearly enough? Or do you need me to yeah, expand yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, we have it, yeah. We got it. Right. Um, so if you look at that recipe, oops, no, too much. Um, uh, the second recipe, uh, Myers Rum, is probably the company that staked claim um, to the planters punch and um, uh, and owning the original planters punch, which obviously probably wasn't the case, but they were the first to get their hands on it. Um, uh, does anybody want to comment on any of those recipes? Yeah, can I? Yes, yes, yes. 
So it goes back to what I was saying, because when I went through all the documents in Grenada and I was looking up like the really early types of rum punches, and none of them had like fruits or juices in it. Mm. It was literally just things like lime, sugar, as you can see, and tea and things like that. And obviously, as you said, later on, bitters. Fruit really came much, much later. And so it's really interesting to see that that's also the same for Jamaica. Mm, mm. And those original punches. And if the name Planters Punch, and there was a, there's a rumor, goes back to your point, Kelvin, of, of debate, where mm. a, a, a hotel in Charlotte in the USA claimed ownership of the Planters Punch because it was called the Planters Hotel. And yes, claimed, I read that. Yes, yeah, no, that's and they claimed ownership. And many historians have, have, have refuted that and dismissed that as just pierce popularity in trying to claim something that didn't belong to them. Mm. Um, and the name Planters Punch uh, in Jamaica was commonly the name, the term more, more than likely came about because that's what the, the planters drank as reward for an, uh, uh, a week or a day of toil, hard work in, 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 in the plantations. And your reward or, or what you had to make you feel nice at the end of the week was some Planters Punch. Well, that'd be interesting um, because of in, obviously in the French Caribbean, there's the same thing that's called plant. It's just the accent that changes. It's, it's planteur. Yeah. And, and the planteur is is more of a, a liqueur because they, it's quite sweet. Um, and you know, you mix you mix it with juices of of your choice. And most of the time, it's guava. They like the guava. They like the the, the pineapple, orange juice. Don't don't talk too much because I oh, will God. discuss yes, the God, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. One more thing that I forgot to say actually. <laughs> But in the ones that I was reading, it, it didn't really refer to ice much because they didn't have ice. Yeah. Well, if you if you look at the date well, of I these, yeah. if you if you look at the date of these, these are quite late in history. So these are yeah. 1899, 1920s when when ice was more commonly used. But if you you're you're correct, if you went back to the 1700s and the early 1800s, mm. the, as you said, it, there would not be ice because there wouldn't ice was a luxury. Yeah. Also, there's another thing. Uh, those early recipes, they won't have very many perishables. So there'll be a lot of teas and the lime would be the main perishable. But yeah. everything else, nothing would be uh, something that could go off because it would be difficult to store things yes. you know, consistently. Right. And what, wouldn't you, this is just me conjecture because I, I probably have done the least research this week. Uh, but Based on my experience coming back to the conversation, mm -hmm. Lizette, had, we had last week, Lizette, well, last time we spoke, uh, economics, where the fact that juice came into the making of punch at some point later on down the road, especially when processed juice. Three prior outbreaks of COVID 19 on their cruise ships, they continue to fail. The risk of sailing this potential COVID-19 outbreak on ships. No, it's not mine. Yeah. You said, you said, right? It's not mine either. Not mine. No. Yeah. All right. All right. This is, this is very, very, very cool. So when you have so, that, would not, could not be a way of, could, could not be the reason why to lengthen it, to be able to make it a longer drink and make more money out of it. Possibly, yeah. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. So, um, so let's move on because we, we have a number of recipes to look at. So, just before I move on from Jamaica, just so that we can move on to different territories, because so this goes back to that recipe that I spoke about. Um, mm. And this this rum punch is still commonly made in Jamaica. This is um, what I have in uh, my glass right here. Um, so it's one part, one part lime, uh, one part of strawberry syrup. If you can see that, typical of what they use in Jamaica. Um, overproof rum and four parts water. Put it in the fridge and let it sit for a while because it improves as it's as it's chilling. Um, and then you just pour it into into a glass. It wouldn't be strained or double strained. And mm. talk to me, talk to me, Manny, quickly. I don't want to labour too long on this recipe, but talk to me as to why. They wouldn't strain, or is it is that a later aspect in the cocktail culture? Well, maybe the it might be to do with equipment as well. As in straining drinks is something where the more the further down the line they got, the more refined they got, then they started to strain drinks. But initially, people even enjoyed their being 
bits in the drink, you know? It's, it's the, the tastes change and trends change for right. our team, you know? Right. Right. So, um, uh, and that was, so that was a simple formula. And, and, um, uh, and we found within the Caribbean that, that when I looked at uh, recipes, that formula tended to, to be commonplace across the Caribbean um, in a number of places. Um, and, um, and if you look at um, uh, Barbados, if you move along to Barbados quite quickly, um, and hopefully that opens very soon, there you go. So there we have a, a classic punch from Barbados. Um, mm. uh, so you can see the dynamics are very similar to that formula of uh, using rum, in this case, Mount Gay, um, lime, sugar, chilled water, and the Angostura and, and the nutmeg to give the added spice. So, um, and, and it was quite commonplace to see similar recipes like this right across the region as the basis for rum punch. The measures might change. And why would that be? Why would you change the the measures well also i mean it depends on the every every component fluctuates doesn't it i mean lime is sweeter one day than it is another day because the of the sugar content within it um so you kind of have to adapt um i would say this recipe looks like a what i would consider a the most fundamental punch recipe like it it hits all of the of the notes you're looking for um, right structurally yeah right Right. Anybody else want to make something of that punch? I, I really uh, want to really get onto the um, the yeah. different. I mean, I, I can, from what I from what I know of of of, of the of the the Bajan poem or the poem that you see. This the obviously the the measurements aren't specifically one to two to three to four here, mm. uh, but the ingredients. I think the thing that that as a basic, what I've seen is that traditionally more people would use lime as their sour. And just because, you know, people think of it, yes, but I think as time has gone on, I've seen things like sour orange and other things being used instead of lime and given a different profile, a slightly more refreshing or, you know, different a different style of punch. I mean, mm. it, so, so, but we talk about that later because I have some, yeah. some, some. Yeah, yeah. You know we have to move on, but at, at Rum Boat Retreat, we have about well, so we've got fifteen standard rum punches that we do here, but we do others, and this one is the traditional rum punch, and it's the one that we sell the most of. It is, it's really simple, but what the guests love about it is that it's not. Um, it, it, it's very easy to drink so you can literally you know the bitters the lime and we have lime pretty much all year round in the region and this is the one i found was historically in all the books in grenada and you could go from i read one that had chilled water and i read one that had chilled coconut water because they didn't have cold water oh, right. Right. Right, right. And I would like to, uh, in Barbados, what I also got from them, and I thought I'd, I'd highlight it here, um, which is the uh, one of the, and there's many more that had it, which was the, f the first one I wanted to highlight in terms of was the use of tea. All right. Um, uh, and you can see here now, finally, because we talked about the history of, of the punch and how tea um, uh, tea was, um, you can see that recipe a lot better now. Mm -hmm. how tea was an important part of um, the ingredient. This is another recipe that I got from Mount Gay. Um, uh, thank you, Miguel, for sharing these recipes with me. They call it a gunfire punch. But as you can see here now, they've added 10 mils of black tea. And, and interesting enough, this is now what we see in the introduction of fruit juices. There's, yeah. some, pa there's some passion fruit puree um, and as you said, uh, Lisbeth, the modern day punches, they realize that they would use the fruit juices. And I suppose really to, to give it structure and sweetness, why would you do that, Manny? Um, I mean, fruit juices are going to carry the flavor, like flavor um, attaches itself to sugar. So the more complex the sugars in the drink, the more complex the drink's going to taste. Also, the, the tea 
is in there, but it's not just for the flavor of the tea. It adds tannins. It adds texture to the drink. So you, you, the more texture you have in the drink, there's like a narrative where the, as you taste the drink, it goes on a journey. That's what you're looking for from a successful punch, you know? And I, I find that tea makes an absolutely uh, marvelous uh, addition for the weak element of mm. the punch. And, um, uh, and, and, and I just wanted to be moving on from Barbados. I came up with a, a mid 19th century recipe of, um, of a rum punch. And let me, uh, let me expand on this one, which also used tea. Uh, mm. but, uh, and that one I felt was, now we can see, oops, oh, I've expanded it, so it's not um, giving me the option to, um, let me uh, not expand it. But that now gives you, uh, we talked about earlier, about using other alcohols. Yes. Wow. Mm -hmm. and, what, uh, and you can see this is a, a recipe from 1845. So we're going back a little bit in history. And it was called the West Indian Planters Punch. Uh, and talk me through this, Manny, in terms of... Um, ingredients and why cognac why madeira well, well you know, I mean, why green tea instead of black tea well cognac is is a, has a little bit more texture to it so you're going to get a little bit more body to the to the drink there and madeira has those notes that madeira is going to complement the jamaican rum specifically this right. looks like a great a great punch. Yeah. I'm going to steal yeah. this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, and, like, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I, I want to taste. I want to taste that. Yeah, that looks like a really, a really interesting that looks recipe. Amazing. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, the recipe quite often one of the the downsides of why we don't see punches served more frequently is because most of the recipes, um, if you notice, for for punches, were based on measurements for a bowl of punch. Mm. And yep. not a recipe for a single serve. Um, and this is a classic example of a bowl of punch here. Um, uh, and obviously, a lot of bars didn't do bowls of punches because it would have end up with a lot of wastage. Um, uh, and then you would have to break it down. And how would you break that down into a single serve? I well, mean, is it, a, is it a case of just dividing it by whatever? The, the problem is, is that drinks don't, you can't just break that recipe down into a single serve and it will taste the same because there's something that happens when you make things en masse that affect the way they taste. They, they, they blend in a slightly different way. Um, so it would be quite difficult to reproduce that into a singular drink, I reckon. We'd have to batch that. So yeah. when are we, we going to batch it? Mark, are you going to batch one for the next, uh, for, for the next rumbling? Well, I, to be fair, I we used yes. when I first started doing this, we used to batch rum punch only because mm -hmm. I didn't have a way to make it as an individual recipe. But at economics, coming back to your 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 point, uh, Lizard, uh, when it stopped being oh, this is a fun thing, maybe you know, and it started kind of scale, I had to step away and say, well. Okay, whilst the punch I'm making now with this great olio saccharum is is probably you know super tasty. Am I really making any money? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I have to find a way to to recreate in some way the the punch style and or the, the method, but make it scalable. So I come up, I came up with a way of doing that. And to Manny's point, I think I pride myself in the fact that I we can now make the same drink as a one drink versus mm. batch. Uh, yes, okay, the batch might taste a little different, but uh, you can still get that same that same vibe coming out with one. Mm. Right. Now, I'm into your territory, Mark, as a Trinidadian. So mm. I got I got these recipes from Angostura as for punches that they make locally at events. Mm. Um, so they didn't give me any measurements. Um, uh, they didn't have it available at the time, so they just. I said, "That's fine. Just give me the the ingredients, and then I've, I, you guys can talk to me a little bit about how you would balance it." So I'll read it out. It's a blend of orange juice, pineapple juice, lime juice, dark rum, and it, they, they said definitely Fernandez Black Label. A little overproof rum for a bit more kick, so you uh, some some punch and rum, some added add sugar, some homemade syrup or honey syrup, and a dash of bitters. So. Uh, so the citrus I mean, is in the blend. 
Look at it as, like, if I remember my mom's rum punch, she wouldn't have any juice other than lime juice in it or some sort of sour citrus. So it might be something like sour orange or something like that, which is where I've had punch like that that was very different from anybody else's. Um, mm. He'd make a sugar syrup also that was quite nice. Um, and her rum punch was, was, was almost, in a way, made like... A concentrate with without the sour, without the the, the 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 weak, and what you would do with it is you just you she'd keep it and it'd be there as a drink when people came over. And if you know a rum punch, you'd you'd kind of come for that, and you'd add ice. So, right. and in a way, I, I didn't actively try to do it that way when I started doing punch, but I kind of came back to that as a thing when I saw. Bruce make punch the first time. He didn't put anything else. He didn't. Maybe we put a little thing in it, like a little soft drink just on the top. Uh, but yeah, we wouldn't put grenadine. There would be no real red color in it. It would be. It would look like maybe a little because because we put bitters, you'd get that that coloring coming through, like that kind of you know kind of brown or a light you know mix of yellow and brown coming through there. But uh, but yeah, no. No fruit juice from a from a personal home perspective. I could see that Angostura kind of making a punch or in, or encouraging people to, to, to make a punch in that way for, for length, as you right. as you described. But yeah, I, I I we wouldn't have made it like that. Well, I wouldn't have seen it made like that at home. And I, I don't for, make so moving on to when you talked about grenadine and juices on this recipe here. Um, the, uh, uh, this is a re these really touristy because this is an unbalanced drink, isn't it, Manny? I mean, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I it's all it, sweet, isn't it? Yeah, that's just gonna be unless unless you have oranges that aren't naturally sweet. There, you add in right. grenadine for a sweet thing, and then you have vat in that. That's just that's just to get people drunk. That's not. That. <laughs> yeah, that's not just like a shot. No, that's that's not. A, that could be a glass drink, man. That's that's way too sweet. Right, yeah. right. So, um, uh, and Kelvin, and there, I could be sure for a reason because you that that won't have a sting in his tail for sure, for sure. Right. <laughs> so, interestingly enough, now, uh, and this is Kelvin's time, um, uh, we, we let's move to the French Caribbean. It, it is, it, it seemed historically that it was the, the British or the English that brought the punch to the Caribbean. Um, and in, in my research of history, it was quite interesting to note that um, the, tra the traditional punch recipe that we, we know that came from India um, is not widely used in the non-English Caribbean. So moving on to the French Caribbean, and this recipe would obviously not just apply to Martinique, but the tea punch um, is a very, very common recipe. Pet uh, tea meaning petit, meaning small punch. Um, uh, and, um, uh, and this one I, was actually dated back to 1887. Um, and it was quite interesting when I found this recipe because at the bottom it's served with ice. And, and you know, Kelvin, that, that is a no-no in the French Caribbean. Yeah, absolutely. It's a no-no. I mean, I, I, I've, I've read in a few articles that uh, whoever is the blogger at the time who tried tea punch for the first time, who went to Martinique or Guadeloupe, they actually served it with ice. And I found that very strange. I mean, I've never seen anybody serve it with ice. Um, although, you know, the ice gives it, if you want that refreshing kind of feel, like in the sun underneath the heat, you know, it would, but you have to drink it quick. You can't sip it because otherwise that ice melts, it dilutes everything and you kill the flavor completely. Right, so right. And, would, it, oh no. and, and the other thing I noted as well with this was uh, I've, I've made my own tea punch and I wouldn't have used a quarter syrup. Well, you see, that as well is something that, again, from, from this uh, measurements, it's, you see, tea punch is a very personal thing. Um, if you go to any, any French Caribbean play, um, country or island and you, you, they, you ask them for tea punch, they give you the bottle. They give you, the, they give you the, everything. You make it by yourself. So right. for them, there's, a, there's, a, there's a term they call a uh, Declan. Declan McCook had, had you give like is the French make your own death is the is the translation. <laughs> yeah, you know, and and the very 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 first time I got introduced to to tea punch was was here in London. A friend of mine um, from Marseille, but his mother is from Martinique, and I tried it for the first time here. Well, not for the first time here, but you know I have experience, but I've tried it properly here for the first time with him. 
Mm. Well, a long time ago. I think I was like like 19 or something like that, or 18. That and is then, a long time ago. Yeah. <laughs> A very long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> long, very, long, very long time ago. But, but then when I actually traveled there and I I see my, my friends say going, what, what do you want? Yeah, tea punch, same thing, tip on you. Let me try and get into this whole tea punch thing properly now. Let me I'm in the country, I'm in Guadeloupe, let me let me feel it. They they give you the bottle. And I'm like, but hold on, wait a minute. What you can pour as much as you want? Yeah, yeah, just pour, man, just pour. And I'm like, so I'm pouring my thing, and I'm I'm being shy. But then when I get when you get used to it, it's like it's a personal thing. You like it sweet, you put as much as syrup you want. You want to like it strong, you put as much rum as you want. You like more citrus, you put as much lime as you want. It's very personal. I remember going when I was in Guadeloupe actually, I went to like a I guess it would be like a beachside, very local restaurant, not a fancy place, you know. Uh there was checkered, red and white checkered um uh tablecloths and food was really nice. But on every table, they had uh, they had condiments on each table. So there was salt and pepper, and then there were these two plastic containers, one with what, one with some sugar and a little spoon, and one with some lime wedges. And if you said you wanted a tea punch because there were glasses on the table, the bottle would just come to you. Yeah, <laughs> the bottle that. come to the table, or it, the bottle might actually have been on somebody else's table. So it's almost like they're passing the ketchup. You know, yeah. they have a ketchup bottle that they pass in and they would hand they hand it to you, you make, and then at the end of the at the end of the meal, you say you had two tea punch and and you pay. They not, you know, they look at the bottle, they okay, you had two, you had two. Yeah. You make and you you use you make it yourself and you pay as you go. So I, that's, I, definitely, I, that's definitely definitely one of the one of the fascinating things about drinking alcohol in the French Caribbean for me. Mm. Yeah, hundred percent. Anyway, anyway. Sorry, I was sorry, going to say that. that when we make the tea punch here, um, we obviously tell the guests to make it themselves and they really enjoy swizzling it and everything. But I will say, unfortunately, that they always, almost ice. always ask for ice. Yeah. Wow. They're like, yeah. oh, it's so strong. Can I just get a little bit of ice? And so yeah. I think that some punches don't translate. They're all about time and place. I mean, you try to transport them or export them to other cultures, they don't understand it in the same way. Yeah. However, if, if the same person went to Martinique, I don't think they would be half as rude as to ox for ice. They would almost accept it for what it is. Mm. Right. Anyway, moving on, um, the next recipe is your forte because this is based on a homemade shop. And we know that many of the 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 rum brands make their own shop. Um, yeah. Is it always is it always orange? Because most of them are always orange flavored. Yeah, because the thing is that in this is a Christmas, typical traditional Christmas drink. So within the Christmas period, origin oranges is at, at its peak. So a lot of people are buying oranges. So mm. so they they will use the oranges in that way, and they'll they'll make this particular drink that has that that kind of Christmas element to it. So it has cinnamon, it has vanilla. It has a nutmeg, you know, it's very, very Christmassy. And um, people actually make this particular drink like from December, make enough for the next year. So when it and, stays and it macerates, it becomes an amazing drink. And can I just make one comment before I move on to the planter's punch? Um, the cinnamon, the, the vanilla and the sugar is like making your own tea punch. It's personal preference. Yes. The amount you put in it's personal preference yes yes 100 i mean um some some of these i've tried some of these the these shrubs some of them are really really sweet and that's the preferred pre preference of that particular person who makes it and some of them are you have the orange balance with the sweetness very nice so it all depends on certain preference you know all right talk to me about some of these uh planters punch uh two i have two planters punch recipes here uh -huh. um I'll, I'll expand them a little bit so that, oops that's too much so that you can see them a little bit better so the first one there um, mm -hmm. uh -huh. um so we have orange juice pineapple juice lemon juice grenadine sugar syrup um it, uh, is there a fixed method of making a planter's punch are you are you always going to get um orange juice or pineapple juice or yes is it... yeah Ma mainly the orange juice and pineapple juice and guava are always right. the ones that are mainly in it um again you know with these kind of drinks in terms of planter um, a lot of people, it's a preferred preference in, in, in the French Caribbean. I mean, 
you will have you will have some people who will not put the not put the Angostura bitters if they don't want it. Some people wouldn't put the lemon juice. Some people will put it. So it's very very it's a very versatile kind of way of making a a a a, a punch. Yeah, and before yeah. I move on to number two, uh, Manny, why would they use lemon juice instead of lime juice? Mm, that's interesting. I'm not. Well, I guess lemon juice has a more delicate citrus flavor. It's more. Yeah, I was. I, uh, yeah. I was lime, lime, lime juice has a more sharper kind of citrus. Yeah, acidic, more acidic. Acidic. That's yeah, I mean, I I don't use I I don't use um I don't use lime juice to make um my rum punch. But I also would suggest that in, in, a, in a case like this, if I was making like a larger version of a tea punch using agricole, I would use lime instead of lemon. But mm. I could explain that at, at a later point because I have a, I think I have a theory as to why one works over the other. Okay. And then the number two is using aged drums. And here you have, which you mentioned earlier, the guava. So mm -hmm. it's just adding a, but the pineapple and the orange remain so yeah because uh, if you as someone someone spoke about grenadine i think it was mark who talked about grenadine yeah it's me. was he was he really yeah. okay yeah. right well in terms of the, the the reddish kind of kind of uh, uh style you will get that the grenadine will give you that comes from the guava obviously so they will they will use the guava to give it that reddish kind of color and then obviously adding a nice you know flavor to it now the home you've had planters punch uh, yeah gen generally how do they taste sweet are they sweet are they sour are they strong uh, do, do they vary? one thing i would say the sweetness is always there they always have a, a nice sweet sweet taste to it i mean the plant the planters punch or planter in the accent is really yeah. really made for more like the 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 person who's not a heavy drinker so if you go to a party in the french caribbean or house party or barbecue party or whatever that's a house house kind of setting You'll find the home vieux, you'll find the home blanc, you'll find that everybody doing the tea punch, and then you'll find the planteur. And then the planteur will be drunk, you put loads of ice in it, and you and you and you pour it, and that the dilution of the ice will make it less sweet over the time that it's diluted. So in Jamaica, we have a term for that. We call it a creeper. Right, yes. Of course. Right. Because you drink right. plenty of you drink plenty of it because it tastes okay. nice, but you don't realize you're getting drunk. Exactly. And and when you have and then a lot of these a lot of these kind of planters, they're made like maybe two, three days beforehand, maybe even a month beforehand. So they sit there, they infuse with all those flavors and the taste will be just be incredible. Right. So uh, uh, Manny, uh, back to you because I know that you've made one of these. Um it's quite interesting to comment that uh uh the spanish caribbean did not embrace the punch as much as the other island it was very difficult to find any punch recipes across the spanish caribbean mm -hmm. um and that was quite fascinating because you know the french adopted it the english obviously adopted it or you could argue brought it to the caribbean but the, the spanish didn't um which was quite interesting but the closest i got to a traditional recipe was in dominica sorry dominican republic and the Mama Joanna, it can be separated into two words as well. Um, and technically, this is a punch, isn't it, Manny? I mean, yes. If you look at the the way it's constructed, it is technically a punch. It's missing a citrus element, but it has the other elements. Yeah. And yeah. it has the complexity, which is the, the key. Um, one thing here is that the, the rum needs to be complemented with quite a full-bodied wine here in order for it to stand up against the other ingredients. If you use something... Thin, like a um, like a tempranillo or something, it's not going to stand up. So you need to use like a Shiraz or uh, something full-bodied and robust, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And when when we make this, we allow it to sit infinitely. So we'll make it in a large batch with the tree bark, and it continues to age and progress. So every time you come back to it, it's a slightly different drink than it was yesterday, you know. And doesn't this come back to the, the conversation? And I think I, when I read a lot of bit, a little bit about Dominican Republic history, again we're going back to medicinal purposes, aren't we? Mm, yeah, of course. Yeah. Do you know it those. Would, it probably descends from from uh, like Amaro's. It's like a if you look at its construction, it's basically uh, they're recreating techniques that are from uh, different parts of the world and then applying them to rum. Basically. Well, what I, what I discovered was was that it was it was repopularized in the 1950s in Dominican Republic by, by mm. I can't remember the name of the gentleman, but the history also predated it way back to even Columbus days, 
right? Yeah. As and the Ta- I think it was the Taino Indians, as, as the sort of drink that they might have consumed. And and obviously back then they wouldn't have used rum; they would have made some sort of aguardente um, alcohol, yeah. which would have uh, replicated it. Um, uh, the rum, but I mean, it's uh, it's quite an interesting balance. And is it going to miss the lime? Is it imbalanced because there's no lime? Well, it's you, you're going to consume it differently. Um, it, it's it's a little bit more potent than a than a regular punch because the the weak element is tea and wine. Um, but you you it's drinkable. It's a it's a delicious thing. If you enjoy the flavors of rum and if you like like woody notes if you like aged rums you're going to really enjoy this yeah i was i was gonna say i had i had one made um years ago by uh, leo owen boys i don't know if you remember leo Mm -hmm. Leo for years and not me yeah but he made one and i'd I'd never even heard any drink i was doing an event with brugal and he made uh his version of a mama one and um at the time we were talking about it obviously there's a the whole idea with the, the tree bark and those hoods in it, there's a bit of that, um, you know, Caribbean um, aphrodisiac type concept with that element of it as well. So I think for the for the Dominican male, if you go to a, a, a shop and they have a man or you're making it home and you have it sitting there, I think I think I believe if I if I'm not mistaken, some of that. There's some of that element of, you know, well, just like they use in Boabande in different islands, you infuse rum with that, da, 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 da. There, I think there's some of that element or that that that, that concept as part of it. I'd like to add just one thing as well, because it has the has the herbal tea element and there was another drink that you had, Roger, that also had tea in it. The shrub, they put coffee, they put coffee in it as well. Right. Um, uh, yeah, they put a little bit of coffee in it. Now that uh, that, that gives it a whole new, different kind of flavor. Wow. I mean, again, it's it's that is a preferred preference. Some people do, some people don't, but they add coffee in it as well. So I just want to add that. Okay, now I'm going to ask you, um, Kelvin, to quickly talk to me so that we can really move on to the specific one punches from the various venues. And I know I know Lizette is waiting to talk about her Grenada one, um, but we have some really fantastic ones that we have coming up on the venue ones, and it, they're all very different from what our traditional punches. So I want I you to be, I forgot actually, sorry. Uh, I really want uh, to you to run through a couple of recipes which you gave us. The first one being the punch maracuja, mm-hmm. uh, it, which is a, a passion fruit. Is maracuja uh, French for passion fruit? Yeah, maracuja, French for passion fruit. They, they also say ma- maracuja without the D, so that's... Um, I think Port- Portugal calls it the same Port- in Portuguese. Right. Um, right. Maracuja, which is uh, the, the passion fruit. Yeah, it's actually fruit. Right. right. And, and this recipe here you gave us was passion fruit, cane sugar, cinnamon, yep. white palm, and nutmeg. Yep. Um, and oh, obviously to- yeah, go on. Obviously, you're boiling the sugar to make a syrup, aren't you? Yeah, yes. So you make it, you're creating your, your own sugar. So this method... You can use the sugarcane syrup that's already done, but if you want to make your own your own syrup from scratch, you have the sugar. So you can have one liter of one liter um, uh, of rum. You have maybe a hundred and it depends if you make it in a liter, right? 100, 150 grams of sugar, uh, three to four um, maracuja, so passion fruit. Obviously, mm-hmm. you cut them. You put some in the bottle. And then you leave some for boiling with the actual sugar. So you have the sugar and the spices. You have the cinnamon stick, uh, vanilla pod. You cut it open just a little bit. Some people put um, dry lemongrass in it or star anise. And, and, and would this be consumed all year round? Um, well, again, I would say yes or no. I mean, this one, if you go deep in the history, it's also a very Christmassy. So in that holiday period, they make a lot right. of these kind of, kind of punches. But... In general, if you go to the French Caribbean, if you go in the markets or in certain bars and stuff, you do see them around. Um, but as a traditional kind of thing, it's a very, very holiday holiday um, drink. Okay. And that's why, you know, you have all those kind of little spices in there. That gives okay. you that kind of holiday feel. And talk to me about your second one, which you definitely said to me was, was Christmas orientated, I believe. Yeah. I mean, was, we don't want to go into two days, but this was a punch cocoa. Oh, yeah. So the punch cocoa is 100% uh, a traditional Christmas uh, drink. And what I find fascinating about this one for me is that everything comes from the coconut itself. Well, if you're living on the islands, 
You know, you get it, you get the coconut, you cut it, you, you grate the coconut with jelly, you make the coconut milk from it, you squeeze that, you boil it with a little bit of water, squeeze that, and then you add all the spices as well. And um, if you don't have like the actual ingredients, you can use the powder format, so you can have the, the ground ground cinnamon. But make sure when you make them, or if you or if you make them, you put them in a sift before you put it in, in the actual water, otherwise it'll get lumps. That'll create lumps. Right. You don't want that. So um, very much, very much traditional. And when you finish make it, leave it for like at least a week or so. Some people leave it two days, but I'll say leave it for at least a week. Get all those flavors. And when you're drinking it, you squeeze a little bit of lime in it, and that will give it a little cit citrus feel. So, like it, so, so it doesn't have a heavy citrus element. No, it doesn't have heavy because you could put the when while you're making it and boiling and you put it into macerate, you can put um, uh, lime zest in it as well. But again, that is a preferred preference. Some people do it, some people don't. You know, so the the lime element and the the the, the citrus element is a really preferred preferred uh, preference. Okay, thank you, thank you for that. Now, I would just like to uh, uh, say, you know, thank you guys for for having a look at, at the traditional recipes. Um, obviously, this is not an exhausted list. This is obviously some, uh, some you know, people can uh, please. Um, if you want to text all the traditional recipes to us or any opinions you have on different styles, um, we're more than happy um, for you to, to come back or if you think there's other traditional recipes that we haven't taken on board. Um, now, what I'd like to get to is the fun part. And the, probably, uh, Manny, you're going to work harder than everybody else because, um, uh, as I said, you're the only professional bartender. I, we could probably call a Mark semi-professional. Um, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, but oh, you're have, professional, you're professional in my eyes, Marky, Marky. Uh, okay. <laughs> so I have a, a, a range of recipes which I've either obtained directly from bars, uh, bartenders, or I've researched in terms of um, uh, getting for. And the first one we're going to talk about, and I, I want everybody to contribute. Let's not just have, let's not make it the Manny show. Um, or everybody to contribute on their thoughts and whether, even if it's not a technical point of view on what their thoughts are on the recipes. And as I said, these rum punches now that you're going to have are very different from what you've, we've, we've been demonstrating as traditional rum punches. So there's a, um, there is still the base core. Obviously, you will not get away from the sweet, sour, the weak, the strong, and the spice. But it's, it, it's how individual venues want to make their specific for their style. And the first one, is from a friend of mine, Roberto Berdicia. Um, He has the most amazing bar, if you ever go to Puerto Rico, in Old San Juan. Why did that one come up? Because that's not the one I clicked. Um, uh, it's coming up, don't worry. He has the most amazing bar in Old San Juan called La Factoria. It is, uh, has, it's become famous worldwide for uh, an amazing, do you want me to expand it a bit? Because you don't need to see the flag. Um, mm -hmm. Um, and uh, uh, and I want you to comment on this. Uh, he he they, they, they make some amazing cocktails. So there you go. Um, um, so uh, obviously, uh, uh, talk to me a little bit about this. But um, uh, I can read it out to people. It, the peels are 15 lemons and two oranges. I measure those peels and add some amount of sugar to a bowl with the peels and sweet muddle it. Put some love to the model. After that, add a quarter of the sugar amount in berries to the mix and sweet model it once again. Add some rosemary and then let it rest. Set mm. it at room temperature for at least one hour. Then add a half a bottle of Don Q and Yeho and stir it until every sugar particles are dissolved and strain the mix. Measure the mix and add half of the measure of the mix in water and stir. Taste it and add water and or rum to taste. Yeah, this is interesting because this looks like a, a quick aliosacrum, something Mark touched on earlier. It looks like it's an a espresso aliosacrum. Aliosacrum usually takes about a day minimum to make, but I guess here he's using less sugar because it means the sugar is going to dissolve a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then I'm guessing that then he adds the, the modifier in the berries and rosemary at the end once the sugar dissolves it look it looks it looks delicious actually yeah it, it looks it looks like some i mean as the, initially i used to do something like this we would just do lemons or depending on your if i was using jamaican rum 
I would mm. add, I would do a blend of lemon and uh, grapefruit peel mm. because I find the oil from the grapefruit and Jamaica and that that kind of funky style works good. But yeah, that that um that 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 does look very similar to to what I would I would have done and also that staying true to that olio style. Yeah. Another way I, I I used to make my olio was um, vacuum seal it. Yeah, vacuum right. sealing is a great way. Right. Right. Can you can you um can you elaborate uh, uh, one of you, Manny or or, or Mark, on to uh, ignorant uh, or lack of education, educated consumers um, on okay. on oleo on oleo and what oleo is and what it gives. I mean, oleo is a is a it's a citrus citrus forward syrup, and originally it would have been made with lemons, maybe a little bit of lime and other citrus but mainly lemon and it's a, a long maturation so you add sugar to the peeled lemons and you leave them for 24 hours and the, the sugar draws all of the acidity and the, 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 the lemon yeah it sounds like there's a television on somewhere i don't think it's me that's my email sorry yeah, so we see. <laughs> I think it's gone now. Um, so yeah, so, so the sugar. I, the sugar. I tell you what, we've always got some little technical something. Uh -huh. <laughs> so just to correct, just to add to what you said, is you add the sugar, not you said to the the peeled lemon. You mean the yeah. lemon peel? Only peel, yeah. It's just, only the peel. It's only made with only peel, yeah. Yeah, I mean the, the 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 word itself is I think is Latin for for sugar oil. Um, mm -hmm. that's oleo saccharum, if I understand. And I guess historically, from what I've read, when I started my little journey in this space, it it that having that as a kind of flavoring agent or an additive made the base of loads of punches. They would have some type of oleosaccharum in there, um, but all citrus gives off different levels of oil. I think you get more oil out of lemons. Lime yeah. is harder to get oil from, um, and then, and even I would even say that um, West Indian or the oranges you grow in the, that we grow in the Caribbean are they 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 give off less oil, or it's harder to get oil out of them than say ones that you get that are grown or that have been created orange. Yeah. Not like ours that aren't necessarily orange. But uh, yeah, I mean, at making a punch with that versus making a punch without it is, I mean, to be fair, in a way, is it, it, it elevates the punch to a place that um, is, is just too tasty to, to miss out. Yeah. Can I, one question can I ask, which is different from this one. I'll pick up the difference. From every other recipe, we've got berries and rosemary. Mm. What, what 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 is that bringing to the table? Well, it's interesting because berries and rosemary is a is a natural partnership. It'd be interesting to know which type. Oh, of which berries? berries? Yeah, Blue, if it's blueberry, blueberry and cranberry will work really well with with rosemary. But, but if you know do Rico, though, could it be? Some, I mean, what 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 berries are there? Yeah, there what's native? That, yeah, that are native. I mean. If, if I was thinking of a berry in Trinidad, it might be maybe a plum or we have types of cherries or different kinds of things like that that mm -hmm. are, I think that those flavors are very, very interesting. And I, I, I suspect that using West Indian cherries or Caribbean cherries in a, a, in a cherry. oh, would be, mm. you know, like a plum. Those, those, like, uh, those plums that, that we have at home, those would be amazing. But I don't know what what berries he using. I would be very, I'm very interested, and I saw the berries and thought, what he, he using what frozen strawberries or or he you know I don't know. It just seems crazy. But mm. yeah, it, Timmy says that Manny, you need more work. So um, uh, <laughs> thanks, thanks. So I just want to ask a question with the lemon peels and the orange peels. I don't. It's a quick. It's a question just for me to know when they cut. The peels, you know, like the whites. Do they try and take out as much as the whites? From well, it? that that will be a bitter. A bit uh, yeah, it depends it? what you want from your aliosacrum, but generally you take off the pith. Um, 
if you if you were to clean sacrum, it depends because different citrus is going to give you different notes in your allo sacrum. Like a uh, mandarin is a quite a sweet citrus oil. Lemon is is a more acidic one. Lime has a little bit more bitterness, so it just varies from what you're trying to achieve. In the so drink. I'll show you something here. This apparently the the Spanish do a lot use a lot of citrus. So I these are professional citrus peelers. I have yeah. five or six of these. Um, so this so I use these to peel mine, and you do get some of the white, but not a lot. So mm -hmm. this peels. This is a, a, a consistent peel. So it will peel a set amount of the lemon off and you get the right amount of skin. Once you set the blade in there, right. Wow. Um, oh, I didn't even know they existed. But I I've never get... seen that in my life. It looks yeah, so I, I, because, of, because of how important that punch is to my, the ethos of, of rumbling as a business, I had to seek out a means to to come with, to industrialize my ability to peel um, citrus. Okay, so, guys. Yeah. Okay, okay. Thank you, guys. Uh, we're going to move on to the next one. But first of all, I just want to mention: if you go to Al San Juan, you cannot not go to um, La Factoria. It is the, the most amazing cocktail bar probably in the whole of Puerto Rico. Um, the only downside of it is is that. Uh, the rum punch, they will always have a rum punch, uh, not necessarily this recipe, because like every bar, um, they switch up their recipes to show the creativity of the bar um, and the different styles. So you might be lucky and get this one, you may not. But uh, I just want to move quickly on. Um, uh, my research, and I contacted um, uh, Lizette earlier this week on a, a particular venue that I discovered on the internet uh, that was very popular for people to go to tourists may as well as locals to go and get uh i believe not just it's food and drink isn't it uh, uh there but um the esters uh esther as in and i assume you told me today that you got the, the recipe from a man but i assume esther is a lady so give us some background and talk to us about esther's rum punch so yeah esther's bar is in a is in the spice vendors market on the beach so there's actually like a little market and they've got lots of little huts within it selling all different types of things and each hut sells different things you know, food and there's like i think two cocktail bars there but the main one that everyone goes to is esther's and kimani who is her son is the now owner well he's taking it over from mom and he's created these amazing drinks in this esther's bar um what's nice about esther's bar is it is in the most humble location it's literally i mean there's some picnic benches out there it's on the beach and it's where i mean there's no class or any you just go there and everybody have a good time and i think that's one of the nice things about grenada actually everyone you once you're a human we can chat you know so that's what you see in Esther's Bar. Lots of yachties go there, and we have a huge yachty community that, that visit there. And then um, you get you get visitors to the island, like tourists, but mainly you get professional locals and just like laboring locals who, on a Friday night, can't wait to have a good drink. They go to Esther's Bar, and the rum punch is the thing. And it's probably the only place on the island that I could think of that um, that local people like drink cocktails, like go for that reason. Which mm. is and why is that? Why? I mean, this is something that's. Uh, is there? Is it historical? Is there a historical reason why they go there, or no, is it just? Look, is it the quality of the serve? It's the lime. So and the setting, the not atmosphere, as the not as in the fruit, the lime, as in the hangout. The yeah, yeah. Is, it's can, just you please, so can you please explain lime to non-Caribbean people, please? So, uh, <laughs> lime is 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 the art of, and it's not hanging out quiet. When I first sort of came, I misunderstood the word growing up as like hanging out, you know. But actually, liming to me is like a real art form. <laughs> <laughs> no, it really is like 
<laughs> it's hard to do it. And when I say that, like, it's the art of just existing. Like, it's a really hard thing to do when you are a busy person or you've got lots of things going on. And people go, you're coming for the line? And I'm like, I've got things to do. And then if you decide you're going for the line, you the can't line. go to the line talking about all the things you've got to do. Like, no, you've got to switch off and you've just got to exist with your friends, enjoy the company, enjoy the chat, enjoy the old talk. It really is a wonderful thing once you know how to do it properly and not frustrate yourself. <laughs> right, right, right. And um, have you, you've obviously tasted this cocktail? I didn't hear you very well. I don't know have if you it's mine Have you tasted this cocktail? Oh, I have many times. Definitely on a Friday night, it's the Lyman spot. It's where you go. And it, it's a great place to like meet friends, network, find out what people have been up to. But the main reason is because Kimani, who is who is, is the son and the, like the owner, he is just a lovable guy. And he is a real people's person. He gets out there, he talks to people. He himself is networking, chatting away to everyone. And um, and his one punch is the best. Like he really does try to create something that's delicious and that works for everybody, which is really hard to do to create something that is something for everyone. That that's hard in one. Well, here, well here's the recipe. Are you still hearing me? Here's the recipe that we you sent on to me. Yeah. Um, so I'll read it out quickly. Um, yeah. uh, we make we make our own simple syrup with our local spices. It is then infused with our local white rum and dark rum. Then it is mixed with Angostura bitters to take away the acidity and sweetness. Then it is mixed with lime juice, orange juice, pineapple juice, grapefruit juice, and completed with grenadine syrup to get a good color base. Any comments, bartender wise, Mark, Manny? Manny. Uh, um, well, uh, it looks like a. It looks like what I would understand as an atypical modern uh, punch in um, the Caribbean. When I go to the Caribbean now, that's the kind of, that's what I experience when I go to most of the bars if i order a rum punch yeah it sounds like a good one it, sounds, yeah. Yeah, no, it looks like a good that's a good punch i mean making your own a spice infused syrup i think is is at, at its core what makes what in the absence of a ulio if you if you have a spice infused syrup to start making a punch with i think you you're miles ahead because if you've taken a punch at its the, the, the thing you can control in it is the sweet Mm, right yeah. you can't control the rum and you can't necessarily control the sour because that's some, that somebody else making the rum and and nature making the the the, the sour so that yeah i think i think we start in a good place there i think yeah. i think the white the white rum and the dark rum well the, it should be an age rum i guess yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Depending on which age rum and how it, how how long it's been aged, that will add a completely different flavor profile. So I think that for me is interesting as well. Right there. I mean, oh, I, 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 I wouldn't necessarily have the pineapple juice in it. That's just me because I don't like pineapple juice in my rum punch. But that's that's. <laughs> 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 and and Lizette, Lizette, is he likely? What local rums is he likely to use? Um, I, I, I every time I've been there, it's been Clark Scott. Yeah, okay. but, uh, yeah, uh, and, and that's molasses-based rum, so it's got good body. It, I mean, as I said, as far as rum punches on the island go, I think he's at least paying attention to the detail of it. And he, he's really – and people – loads and loads of – like, most people who visit the island are, and are in the south will always go to Esther's Bar. Yeah, and that – you can tell he cares about his punch because, yeah. you know, we make a really simple syrup, and that, that I yeah. think, is – is a is a is a key thing there. So hey, hats off, and and it shows because you say if everybody goes there for the rum punch, then obviously yeah, I w I would love to taste that. That must taste incredible. Yeah, yeah. That drink looks okay. Good. Hey, okay, hey. guys. So we're moving to the we're moving to the island of Haiti. I'm just going to get um, my card off. One sec. Yeah. So we're moving to the island of Haiti, uh, famed for its rum Babancourt. If anybody's ever tasted it. Yeah. Um. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Haiti, uh, being of the French Caribbean, use sugarcane juice in their blend, um, uh, as in rums, the sugarcane juice for their rums in their blends. 
Um, they also use molasses bombs, if I'm not mistaken, as well. Uh, isn't, as a, isn't, isn't Bob and Co. Uh, 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 what do they call it? Is, is, isn't Bob and Co. a sugar cane honey rum or something like that? Is it not a... Um, I think they've changed their technique over the years. Um, I think they used to use sugarcane juice, and since um, uh, the modern times, they've changed uh, the recipe. So I'll be interested in comments coming in as to what it currently is made of. But yeah, here's a recipe dated back to 1947. Uh, a lot of details I've got from this is from Jeff Beach Bomberry, uh, who has this amazing tiki bar in New Orleans called Latitude 29. Um, so big up Jeff, you, you need to visit that bar. It, it's unbelievable. And Jeff's one of the, the biggest historians in tiki. Um, but, but here, what we have different to a rum punch now is uh we're using a a rum that is uh sugarcane juice or sugarcane syrup based we'll get clarity on that and we're using maraschino yeah yes i mean the maraschino is also going to add a lot of it's going to add body as well because of the texture of the liqueur itself and the, the myers the, the float on top is is really just fragrant in the same way with a, like a queen's park with fragrance um, is what gives it the flavor because seventy percent of what you taste is, you know, is what you smell. So that's going to have a big impact. The the mice is going to complement the the sugarcane juice. This looks okay. Like full, full flavor okay. Just to jump in, Ruben has, has corrected me, so we were right. Uh, both, all of us were right. Uh, Babancourt mm. uses the juice in dry season and the cane syrup in wet season. Okay, because oh. I, I was, I was, I knew I had heard something about that. Many years ago, I love the product. I mean, I have a bottle right there. I yeah, yeah. It. it was. Yeah, yeah. I, know, I know there was there was some contention years ago where people were saying, "Oh well, they're not really agricultural." And well, anyway, the only agricultural yeah. is, in, is in Martinique, and it's, uh, there was all this. But yeah, yeah okay, good. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. that's the thing my father used to drink back in the days as well. So, uh, one it. of the most one of the most underrated rums in the world. I mean, it's amazing. And here's another recipe from Haiti. Uh, which I picked up from, there's a couple of hotels that had similar recipes, uh, this one and the Marriott. Um, but this Pango. was... Um, uh, <laughs> I like it. Pango rum. Here, here they're using a pango rum, obviously, which means a blend of pineapple and mango. And mango. I like so that. we're getting now into uh, somebody that's willing to use a flavoured rum in their, mm. in, their, in their rum punch. What does that bring? And here we also have passion fruit. We did have passion fruit in a previous one, didn't we? Um, but what is a flavoured one bringing to the table? Well, I mean, again, the the wherever you put the flavours within the drink, like so, say you infuse a spirit with flavour, it means it's going to hit the flavor, the taste buds at a different point in consumption. So if you if you're more versatile in in how flavour is introduced to the drink, so say you use a juice or you use a, a flavoured rum, a juice is going to to hit you in a different way than a, a flavored rum will kind of adds layers to the drink so you know adds complexity which is what you're looking for okay okay so that that's fascinating now i'm gonna move now back to the island of antigua i think an island that is close to your heart miss uh, manny mr ferris you mm -hmm. and um the first one i'm gonna discuss was actually a last minute recipe that i got from a bartender who um uh, provide um, a consultancy service and he did a recipe that I found absolutely interesting and there's a lot of tradition in this recipe um, and we'll load it up um, because here we have what's the interest here Ooh, sour sub tea wow yes wow. I like that I like this one uh, yeah. Yeah. very different in terms of flavor so, and the soursop tea is not made from the fruit. Yeah, it's the leaves. Yes, it's the leaves. Wow. But soursop, that, that, that has a really calming effect on its yes. own. When you well, oh, it, it's like chamomile. You drink but, it, 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 it's very relaxing. That look at, in the evening hair. But, but, but yeah. look at the other, talk about very relaxing. Look at the other tea. Yeah. I know, really? Yeah. 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 Robust tea is is put you to sleep, but that's what I'm saying. Like that, that that's a what Timmy time is. E he making a party done, party done. I'm going to sleep after that. I mean, that is, two. Well, I mean, 
<laughs> on top what, of the rum with that tea, you out like a light man. Wow. That's but, no more light mint tea. That's no more light mint punch. <laughs> uh, how, 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 how does that serve? What was the was the side? What kind of glass do you serve that in? Tall glass, small glass? Yeah. How would that? That because. looks like a that looks that's a tall glass serve, isn't it? With yeah, four ounces, six thing. ounces, seven yeah. ounces. You're looking at seven ounces, so you're looking at a, a hundred and almost a hundred and fifty uh, milliliters, aren't you? There, mm. and then you're shaking yeah. that too. So now and with with so, ice, uh, with yeah. ice, so it's going to stretch even further. Yeah. What what are those teas going to bring to the equation, Manny, in terms of flavor? Herbal teas well, and sour sap tea. Because this is this this punch itself is is more rooted in the traditions of punch as a as a trend because it's quite delicate. It seems like it's quite mm -hmm. a, a, a textured and light punch, whereas punch, if you look at it early, was very light and an easy drinking uh, drink. Whereas this looks like it's similar to that, you know. It looks yeah. great. Yeah. It looks and quite, it's quite interesting that he, he uses English Harbour 10-year-old and not the five-year-old, which is mm. the more common um, uh, rum that's consumed on the island. But the, the five-year-old is more consumed than the 10, but the 10 has a different structure to it. So it's quite interesting. Uh, I, I think it looks like a very interesting rum punch, and I think it's it's one of those I think I would love to try and then go to sleep afterwards. <laughs> yeah, I think he, he, to me, he... he, he he paying the kind of respect to the to the heritage of of the drink in terms of he treating rum punch like like we talked about previously like uh, like it should be treated like a, a drink of of you know punch was a a drink for the wealthy that if you had to mm. sell that drink somewhere that drink gonna cost you know a double shot at a, a ten year old rum in a yeah, punch yeah 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 yeah. 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 Top dollar for that as a drink. You're not, you're not, you're not even using no unaged, no, no, or, or rum that is kind of low. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is, that's a, that's a drink. That's a very, 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 very classy drink. Yeah. Um, and Timmy, Timmy Falzon's asking, how is the rooibos tea used? Is it made into a tea? Yes, Timmy. Uh, sorry, no. The, the rooibos tea is apparently Sweet Dreams is a brand of tea. That is a blend of roy is it rooibos? Is that I'm not sure if that's the correct yeah. pronunciation. Yeah. 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 Right, but um, it's a blend of rooibos and other herbal teas. And what they do is that, they, as you see at the bottom, they put the tea back to sit for uh, in the rum for one minute. So it's oh. not a long infusion. So they let the tea sit steep in the rum for one minute before they they mix the rum into the rest of the um, ingredients. That's so it's just maybe like a light touch. The, 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 you'll get more of the sour sub tea flavor, the sour sub flavor coming through. In that. Yeah. Yeah. If you have the tea, I would assume, again, the, the effect of that sour sub flavor in there is going to be very interesting. And, and I'm quickly. I'm making that tonight. Sorry? I'm, uh, I'm making that tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good to get to bed. You see, no, you and you want to I can't, I can't oh, go I, and pick no leaf off and no sour sub tree here. Control, yeah. control. So, Gabriele, uh, thank you for mentioning the Myrtle Bank Punch. We're going to talk about that in a little while. So, mm -hmm. the last one from Antigua is some hard work for you, Manny, because okay. we have we have no... Um, I, I was unable to get measures. Wow. So, how would you measure this up? Well, structurally, that looks like... Uh, Sorrel is a, a regular modifier, I would say. So you're looking at 50 to 60 mil rum there. Mm -hmm. Sorrel, I'm guessing. It depends on how you're how you're getting that sorrel. Because if that's um, sorrel leaves in hibiscus, then it's different. If it's a syrup, I'm guessing it's about 15 mil. No, no, no. It, it, I actually I remember it was a it was so it was the leaves that were steeped into um in a tea uh, into a tea. Yes. Okay. But has it already been has it already been spiced the tea or is it literally just water infused with with uh, it was diff it was water and, and soul and I think there was a couple of spices in it. Um so it looks like maybe the soul, the ginger, and the cinnamon come as one with the anise. Yeah, that I probably think is the case. That, uh, yeah. They taking that as a as a as a tea. Yeah, I think that's probably the case. So the soul will be steeped to the ginger, the cinnamon, and the star anise. Yeah. But, um, so, um, so what ratio would you use with the rum and soul and sugar and lime? 
Um, I would say 15 lime. It depends if the sugar is added to the sorrel to make a syrup. If it's not, then I would say I would do 20, 20 sugar, depending on yeah. the ratio, two to one or one to one. And in yeah. the tea, you're looking at about 30 to 40 mil and then maybe 60 mil rum. But that's my preference. I like it. Right. Yeah, stronger. Right. Uh, and the, the interesting use of star anise, we've not seen that before. Yeah, that's, is star anise common in the Caribbean? Yes. No, I wouldn't. Is it? Yeah, it is. Oh. It yeah, it depends. Yeah, so, oh. some people use star anise and sorrel. I yeah, clove star anise. Those are. Flavors. I don't. But you see, like in marbi, you see when you're making marbi and stuff, mm. people will put inside the pot when it's burned. Yeah. That's so great. when I make my marbi here, I use star anise. So, yeah. Yeah, uh, and some like, people. So. Right. So uh, moving on to the Bahamas. Um and. And what we had here was quite interesting getting to the Bahamas because um, another use wow. of the oleo, of the oleo um, but using Ray Nephew, which is not obviously an island rum. Mm. Uh, Ricardo is, a, is an island rum. I do have um, some Ricardo rum here. Um, I don't even know who the Ricardo, to be honest. So I have some, I have some Ricardo. Can you see that? So, oh, yeah. Yep. Ricardo yep. Gold here from Bahamas. Okay, um, that's a local rum. It it's cool. a local rum to the Bahamas. Bahamas doesn't have a distillery, mm. right? You might look at some websites um, for other Bahamian rum. I'm trying to remember the name of the popular one. John um, that's it, John Watlins. Uh, John Watlins are ex Bacardi, not ex, they are Bacardi family members. And they used to source their rums from Bacardi, but I don't think Bacardi give them rum anymore. So they, uh, if you look at their website, they say distilled in Bahamas, but as far as I'm aware, there is no distillery in Bahamas. Okay. Um, I, so from, from the years ago that I went, they, they were setting up distilling. So I, I pretty much think that it's set up now. They were distilling something. I know they were blending, but they, they had intentions to distill. So double check. They might be distilling that. Right, but here, but here we have a blend of rums in in, in Bahamas at the French Leave Resort. Um, so we're using the first opportunity I think we've seen of somebody blending rums that traditional to the tiki culture. Yeah, Mount um, Island as well. Ray, Ray nephew from Jamaica, Ricardo locally, and Plantation Dark, which is the multi-island rum. Um, so what's those blend of rums going to give you differently? Well, it's interesting because the the rare nephew is going to give you that full flavor, that uh, f like um, you know grassy, like uh, tropical notes. And the plantation dark is quite it's quite a heavy rum, um, mm -hmm. um, but it will partner well with the plantation with the rare nephew. It's interesting, interesting blend. Well, the, the original dark was Trinidad, but now it's a mix of I think it's Barbados and Jamaica. Yeah, so there's no Trinidad left, I don't think. You get a lot of funk in that. And then the grapefruit juice, as I was saying previously, having grapefruit juice in there, I think, well, it goes, that works really well with that kind of Jamaica and funkiness. So, and the fact that they're using all your sacrum in there, I'm like, yeah, that, that punch, that, that punch is, it'd probably be quite, quite, tasty. somebody thought a lot about what they were doing. Yeah, they were. yeah it seems like it's a, from a, someone who's well read. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. so, you, know, you get lemon flavor, orange, all, all Kind of full citrus in there. Looks good. Yeah. Like a good one. Nice. Okay, so oops, there we go. So let me expand this a little bit more so you can see it more clearly. Um, so we're into Dominica now. Oh, wow. um, For one year. And, <laughs> Happy juice. <laughs> <laughs> have you have you been to Happy Juice? No. Okay, so it's a name at the bar. It's a yeah. name of the bar on the Champagne Reef in um, uh, in Dominica. Um, it's this is the first use of a bush rum. I've had bush rum rum punches before, and we will talk about bush rums in a in a later episode of Caribbean Rum Chronicles. So please watch this space for the next um, one. I'm not we're not sure we're doing bush rum on the next one, but we will talk about bush rum. But also here is where it goes back to what Mark said earlier. We're using sour oranges for the citrus, aren't we? we the Seville oranges are sour oranges. Yeah. Um, so you're getting a citrus out of Seville oranges. Are Seville oranges widely available still? 
I've got loads. I've got some right now. I yeah, you can get them. You, you do get them, but they're not the the local. Um, Grenadian people like to use it for juice more than so that it's not the the choice one. You know, like if you go to the market and you see oranges and they say civil oranges, they say, oh, okay. Means I have so orange juice is, is I mean if you like grapefruit juice so orange juice is a uh, are super refreshing a nice nice I love it are they, nice are they, orange are they, are they really sour are they like they are they are so but they're lovely though they make they they made for juice they made for that's what I say making do, do people do people so make, make juice for juice only do they actually eat them as just normal or just juice no you wouldn't eat it you would more you would definitely um, use it. it sounds to me like the same kind of uh like lahara in a curacao which is the they're not small they they usually are like okay. they have reasonable Hold on a minute. let me see if i have one continue talking yeah because lahara they make they, that's what they make the blue curacao from yeah yeah i remember you were you were talking. Uh, so um the bush the bush rum would give you the, probably i've not had petite savan bush rum but it was probably give you those grassy sort of heavy ester notes um yeah. which, would, which would give the rum a different um it's, layer in it's flavor. More like yeah, in juice based bush rum they're not necessarily using molasses they've taken cane that they at least how they would make bush rum they, some people they well this sounds like a like a proper one but you're stealing some cane or you might have some cane growing and you press your own <laughs> cane you have a you get your juice you're making no molasses you ferment it you ferment and you distill that and Go about your business from there. Yeah. But that's and, interesting and, that it's aged as well. I was just about to ask you, why are they aging it? Well, I mean, when you age things, generally what you're doing is you're rounding out the flavors, or depending on what you're aging it in, if you're trying to impart flavor from the receptacle. But I'm guessing a small vat, is that a wooden vat or a steel vat? I'm guessing it's... Yeah, okay. it's, it's, not like a, it's not like a... It's a wooden vat. I was I was thinking it was a, a metal vat, but because I just thought they were using it to kind of marry, but a mm. wooden vat. That, but let, hold on. Let me let me let me stand corrected. I think it's a wooden vat, but I'm not sure. Mm. Okay. Because if you age right. it in a wooden vat, you're going to impart some flavor as well and kind of yeah, round, it round it out, you know? Yeah. For a year. <laughs> wouldn't, a wouldn't, any, wouldn't, wouldn't any of those ingredients go off in that, in that period of time? Well, it depends on how the Seville oh, orange is being okay. in the okay. Wow. Okay. Because if they're using the, say they're using the skin of the okay. Seville orange, then it will be okay. Right, but then also you have a look. If there's enough sugar, it's about sugar content because if the bricks is high enough, it's gonna it's gonna preserve the the drink anyway, and there's alcohol too. Right, it's, right, it's gonna right. change for sure though. Right. Yeah, I kind of I, I definitely had to try that punch that. Yeah, that, that, yeah. That's serious. Yeah, um, Lizette's back with her salt orange. Okay, thank you, Lizette. Thank you for sharing that with us. Everyone knows what they look like now. Thank so, you, Lizette. Appreciate it. I'm going to share with you a recipe, a current recipe from the Round Hill Hotel in Jamaica. It's been served since 1952. Mm -hmm. um, a Round Hill Hotel is just outside of Montego Bay. Um, uh, and interesting enough for this recipe, we have apricot brandy. Mm. Talk me through. Um, it looks that well looks balanced. That looks great, actually. It, it looks very similar to a fish house, actually, just with the addition of uh, pineapple juice. Um, but it, yeah, it looks apricot brandy pairs really well with with citrus flavors. Like stone fruit and citrus are a great partnership, and they kind of complement each other. They elevate each other. Um, but yeah, this this looks very interesting. I've never never yeah. seen that before. Okay, um, and then anybody else? I and, and sorry, we're running a little bit over time, but we're going to keep going for probably about 10, 15 more minutes so that we can finish off. Um, and um, uh, we like to get detail. And here's a very, uh, a very famous hotel in the history of Jamaica. Uh, the hotel doesn't exist anymore, but they uh, apparently there's been a launch in the US of a, uh, the, a rum called the Myrtle Bank Rum. Uh, or the Myrtle Rum, which was um, uh, created as a rum that was traditionally served at this hotel uh, back in the 1920s. Um, there is no record of the exact recipe at the hotel, but there's, um, uh, there are some research in accordance to the type two recipes that were taken by two people who visited the, the hotel. Obviously, the two tiki gods, which is Trader Vic and Don the Beach. 
Um, let's, uh, uh, and let's talk about, again, the first, I'm more inclined to think that Dom the Beach's recipe is more likely to have been served in Trader Vic because I just feel as if Don the Beach is using Jamaican rum. Yep, I mm. would say that. <laughs> um, whereas Trader Vic is using a Demerara rum. Um, and when you look at the ingredients in Don the Beach's recipe, these would all have been available um, easily in Jamaica, whereas the Trader Vic looks like he's taken a recipe and done his own twist. I'm not saying that the Trader Vic's recipe is not a bad recipe. I'm just mm. saying that uh, the conjecture. Which one would you prefer? Well, just about the look of it, I think the Don the Beach version. I would, I would more if I had to look at it, I'd be more inclined to try that one first, and then see what the other one would be like, just for just for comparison. Um, and, and and we're seeing here um, white grapefruit juice. We've not seen white grapefruit juice um before have we oh. well one did, did the recipe before say grapefruit but was it white or pink no we don't have the recipe before what's no, more no, no. common what's more common the one from the bahamas i said there was grapefruit juice in that it but didn't say did it, it say pink say, or white it didn't yeah. say pink or white no it's um, interesting because white grapefruit juice is gonna the the don's honey which is a spiced honey generally mm -hmm. um it pairs really well with grapefruit so the white grapefruit and the, the spiced honey is a really great combination. Right. So and, 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 I, 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 back to Mark's um, Jamaican rum mm. and grapefruit sort of combo that you, you sort of... Yeah, made. yeah. It does just my my experience so far. I've found, I mean, you know, the skin of it, the grapefruit juice, ting, Jamaican rum, or even agricole, I find grapefruit just, they seem to have a real good friendship, flavor friendship. Right. And uh, the soda water, is that just to lengthen it or is it to soften it? Mm. Yeah, I, I'm guessing it's to, to soften it because there's quite a lot of rum in this drink if you look at it already. It, it probably yeah. needs to be there. Probably, yeah. probably yeah. to soften it. I mean, I, I know I've been, I don't do it often, but I do add a little soft. We add a little soda. Probably, we add a little ting because we put ting in everything. So, mm. <laughs> <laughs> top, top, top the rum punch with ting. To bring out that you know, just to add a little more citrus, but and just to give a little, almost like a little spark. Yeah, like, you want to say? Effervescence is going to change the way you the, a drink smells as well. So if it's if it's sparkling, it's going to hit you in a slightly different way. And is the, is the trade of Vic recipe lacking weak a weak component? Um, I mean, it depends on how it's made. You know, maybe his weak is just. If they're shaking that drink, then the then it's gonna it's gonna be diluted eventually, right. you know. Right, right. So it, it's really gonna depend on the dilution from how on 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 shaking it or how or whether it serves on crushed ice, for example. Yeah, because I don the beach comer version. I'm guessing is a build. I doubt right. that's a shaking drink. Yeah. Right, right. All right. Well, that's interesting. And Myrtle Bank Hotel had a famous was very famous for its one punch. But uh, we're going to move on to the island of Nevis. Um, and the most fascinating thing about this one, you can see for yourselves, is ingredients of uh, black, black pepper. That's interesting. That's in that is interesting. I think that would be really nice. I love why, it. Why would you add black pepper? Well, there's black pepper in a, in a a lot of a lot of uh, components like gin. A lot of gins have black pepper in in their distillation process. Black pepper is going to add texture. It would be interesting to know whether that's peppercorn that's added to to infuse, or if that's actual black pepper, ground black pepper. Yeah, because um, I'm wondering, is they, yeah, are they if you if you put the corns in a shake and then shake that as a drink and then pour it out and don't have the so you get the corns flavor in that. Exactly. Right. It, might, it might be infused first, maybe. Yeah, I would have thought they, what do you call it, you know? Crush the corns in Crush the drink. The corns. No, yeah, and then and then put it just to bring out the flavor because the, yeah. the corns alone wouldn't really do very much, I wouldn't have thought. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. If you, if, if you didn't want to over break, if you put the corns in a shake with the ice whilst you're shaking yeah. it, right. you know, 
You'd be surprised. Black pepper imparts quite a lot of flavor. So you don't, so like you, don't crush it. You, put, you put it in the shaker with the ingredients and then you shake it. And then while you shake it, 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 it the flavor comes out in it. That's what you're trying to say. Yeah, that's what I was, because I, I was just thinking that a quarter teaspoon of, of black pepper is a fair bit of black pepper if it's ground black pepper on its own. Mm. Whereas if you mm. have a quarter teaspoon of black pepper corns and you put yeah. that, it's less volume. You, yes. put that, you, know, you put it into a shaker and you give the shake you're gonna, it's gonna impart flavor, yes, but black pepper could jump in a can. It's like ginger. If you put too much ginger in something, it yeah. becomes a drink. Going yeah. back to Roger and I on our sorrel with ginger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can kill it with fire with the ginger. So, I yes. Yes. so, so that's the killer. Probably have the same effect. So, that's mm. a killer bee in um, Nevis. And then we're gonna head to St. Lucia. And this, uh, this uh, punch in St. Lucia is now using a coconut rum. Let's get you a bit more um, expansion oh. on that. There you go. Uh, and it's kind of like a, it's like a pina colada. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, without the coconut cream. It looks, it looks, it looks, it looks good. Right. That'll probably I mean, be a real, I, I, I do a drink similar to that. And I think it, 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 it'll give you that, that kind of similar, like a, a, a non-creamy pina colada style drink. Right, it looks refreshing, doesn't it? I mean, it just because um, obviously I I assumed it was Bounty Coconut uh, because that's a local coconut rum, um, and I'm not sure. I think Bounty Coconut is foolproof. I, I, I'd have to check on that. Um, but again, it's going to give you that pina colada note, isn't it? Without the um, the creaminess. Um, that you're that you're going to get without it and we have two more to go um this is the second to last one um uh, here you know it says frenchman reef okay so oh, so this is uh captain morgan silver rum um, so here we have pomegranates which we've not seen <clears throat> used before what does pomegranate bring to a drink well, pomegranate is generally quite a sour. It can be quite feel quite dry. It adds like a, a lot of texture um, when it's as a juice. I mean, it's got it's got a lot of body to it. It's interesting that it's a, a raspberry rum and a pomegranate liqueur as well. Yeah, yeah. Because I've never had a raspberry rum. I've had many flavored mm -hmm. rums in my time, but. I mean, Kelvin, have you ever thought of using raspberries or have you before? Uh, no, nope. I've never thought of it. And this has given me a little bit of an idea of what to do next. <laughs> it looks yeah. like quite a sweet drink, sir. Mm, yeah. Cruzan, I lived in the BVI for two years. And so they obviously the USVI neighbor and, and they, they Cruzan are famous for their flavored rums. So that wouldn't, it wouldn't be a, it would be similar to like, uh, Malibu in its strength. Um, okay. More for flavor. They do a banging mango and banana. I never tried a raspberry, but I wouldn't doubt it's something similar. Right. So the Captain Morgan Silver is going to give you the full strength rum, and uh, raspberry yeah. rum is, is a liqueur level. Liqueur level. Yeah. yeah. The raspberry rum is definitely going to be a liqueur level. I, I will say, as I say, Cruzan, the flavored rums I have had of theirs, they they do a really good job of of getting the flavor and so. Right. I and last. And last but not least is the punch, which is f a punch that is not just about rum. Wow. Hmm. Why? That's interesting. Sorry, uh, sorry, my misspelling for cranberry. I'm a bit dyslexic. Mm. <laughs> that's, um, that's like, uh, what is that drink? Jeez, uh, what is that drink again? That's almost like a. Um, Oh God, I can't, I can't remember the name of the drink. Like a Long Island. Oh, it's like, it's oh, like a I see. I've had this drink. Is it Sorry? Good? I have had this drink. Okay. Uh, yeah. Was yeah. it what? Do I you do. remember what happened after? <laughs> so I, I could tell you that Goatee is a, a, as a local bartender, I think who had worked at this bar for 50 years. Yeah. And, Actually, and Petit St. Vincent is, is a private island. Okay, and right. 
and they um the staff who who were like the original star there's like one guy called otnell they've kind of all been there forever like they arrived as kids and now they're like big people and they're just still working on this private island so it's really nice you'll meet people who like knew the first owners the second owners <laughs> and um and goatees is the beach bar they've got like a beach bar that's open to the general public the rest of it is private okay, and cool. the the rum punch down there it yeah it's quite sweet um mm. but, but it but it is it's perfect like i said it's it's perfect for the environment like right? you don't notice it so much because it's just the most beautiful and, and you're already refreshed by the sea surrounding you absolutely everywhere so you don't mind a sweet drink like a cooler kind of thing Just, and, yeah. and and we know the vodka we know the vodka is only going to give you an alcohol content uh but yeah. gin brings gin brings different notes i mean you bring in those juniper and those botanical notes which um surely is going to give a level of of of, of a new dynamic and, and a variety to this um to a rum punch we have never i've not seen gin using a rum punch before no, well, there, there, this there's a this reminds me of a drink. I mean, it's not classified as a as a rum punch, but it's a a drink they do in Colombia. It's called coco loco, which means crazy coconut, and it's like the coconut cream, coconut water. They put rum, tequila, vodka, and lime juice, mm. and they serve it with ice. So seeing that, there's a straight remind me of, of of that of that kind of drink, which is uh, really interesting using. But I'm now wondering why it's so sweet because it doesn't have any sugar syrup in it, and when I taste it, it's quite sweet. But it might be those juices they're processed, like the orange. I think that I think oh, that you're so looking at a, a whole ounce of peach liqueur. Yeah, yeah. peach liqueur is sweet. Yeah, right, that's a, a whole lot. ounce on top of three ounces of of orange juice. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, yeah. I think this drink has intentions, doesn't it? It's not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not well, it is. So what are you trying to say? It's to get you drunk. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm gonna it, say it, 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 it was called the hammer, isn't it? So yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, there you go. Okay, so let's wrap up, guys. Um, it's been a really good session. Um, we've spoken about a number of different styles of punches. I'm sure everybody has their favourites. Um, uh, I'd like to ask you uh, a little bit about what you felt was. Was there any particular vomp punch that stood out for you um, uh, in particular? And, um, and also what you felt the future of um, the future lies for the rum punch. Is it a drink to stay? Can the rum punch uh, become a, a cocktail? Uh, on a, can it achieve the cocktail bar menu? Uh, I mean... It, that that depends. I mean, to, to answer your first question, obviously any of the punches that had a Olio Sacrum in it for me were the standout punches because that it speaks for me because I kind of followed that path, having been put on it many years ago. Um, I th candy rum punch be on a cocktail menu. Well, it's on mine, but my my boy is a concept that requires that that drink on it. Um, I think personally, and I think Roger, you and I spoke about this a long time ago, um, anybody that is selling rum or featuring rum as a as its kind of primary drink should have a rum punch um, on it that probably follows some sort of historical um, note, tea in it, an olio or something to kind of educate people because I think a rum punch is, rum punch is, a, is an important part of rum's heritage and the history of what rum is and how people engage with it as a as a spirit. So in order for people to, to kind of engage going forward, I think knowing a little bit about the past and having those tastes that kind of bring you, oh, wow, bring you to that place, I think, you know, I think it's important for me anyway. All right. Anybody, so Buddy, your, your um, views? So yeah, my the favorite punch so far was the the sour sup tea and rooibos. That the, the Timmy's tea. I, apparently, yeah. Timmy's taking claim to it because it's got no, his no. name on it. I, I heard it first though, Timmy. I'm gonna I'm gonna steal that drink. I'm gonna make it for a barbecue next week, a one man barbecue. Um, but in I terms of punch of sauce of leaves, man. Yeah, in terms of punch as a as a category, I think. We've seen a trend recently in 
the drinks industry where punch is respected. I mean, um, David Wondrick has written a, a book about punch. There's a guys, there's a, guys. If you if you want to learn more about the rum punch, here's David Wondrick's book. Great book. Punch. Yeah, it's an absolutely um, amazing read. Um, it, it has a number of historical recipes. Most of them do not relate to the Caribbean. I think the majority of them are either the American or English recipes of rum punches served, which were, as I said, very commonly served in uh, parties or establishments for wealthy people. But it gives you a fantastic history of the punch. Yeah, it's great. It's and then in, in terms of modern modern uh, people adopting the punch, there's a there's a bar called the Punch Room at the Edition Hotel, which every drink is a punch. And um, they use modern techniques. There's a, a bartender called uh, Nick Strangeway who developed the initial menu there. And they they were redistilling cranberries down to their purest sense. And they were, they were looking, deconstructing the punch and modernizing it for, for you know, new guests and to more discerning palates. So I think punch is a, is a, art form that is being adopted by the industry and it will continue to be and it will develop because people have a first for that you know how is uh, Lizette your views and 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 you you live in the Caribbean and obviously you serve punches at your your guest house um every tourist that comes to the Caribbean the first thing they want is a rum punch um does it have legs and also tell me was there a favorite punch that stood out to you and you can't say Esther's because that's your local punch <laughs> I am trying Timmy's before bed tonight, I tell you that. That's <laughs> gonna be the drink this evening. So I've got to send it out. I've got to send a recipe out on, on to everybody. Oh, yeah, we need that. Yes, we yeah. need that. But, um, the power top tea for me is just one I, I haven't thought about and, and, and it, I have it. So because it's a resource that's close to me, it, it almost resonates well with me. But um, the rum punch, of course, because of where I am and my environment and dealing with people who are visiting the island, it is that's all they talk about. In actual fact, it's probably one of the reasons that cocktails take a while to really build momentum in the Caribbean because the demand is really for the punch. Mm. And, um, and so that's for people visiting because it's kind of this romantic idea of what a rum punch does. Um, and they have good memories or fond memories of a rum punch on their last holiday. But also for people that live here and Grenadian people, they don't understand always the concept of a cocktail because it's kind of like, oh, that's what them bourgeois people do. But the punch, everyone gets it, you know? It's like, yeah, I want a punch. So the word punch, of course, is, yeah, it's synonymous with the Caribbean, even though other cultures have, of course, and it comes from a different culture. But the rum punch here is definitely here to stay. I can't see it going anywhere. And uh, somebody called Don Tucker said he believes you took him to Esther's. Oh, yeah, I take loads of people there. Uh, it's the thing I do, man. <laughs> I um, real Grenada. A quick hi to Marita. She's obviously, I don't know if she's still listening. Um, uh, the rum doctor, um, you're views on the punch, uh, particularly using flavoured rums? Yeah, I, I think um, the, the rum punch is something that's definitely, definitely growing, definitely going to continue to grow. And in terms of you've been using flavoured rums, as Manny so well um, points out in various of the rums that he talked about, you know, it, it adds a different element to them, to the actual full punch. And, um, you know, the rum punch is it, it, it's, a, it's a drink that whether you go to the Caribbean or you whether you go to the Caribbean or you're not from the Caribbean, when you're in within Europe, America, wherever, going and getting a rum punch gives you, brings you back to that great holiday you had, that famous moment you had. You know, it, it, always, it always gives you a nice, great memory. So for that, the rum punch will always keep going. And on top of that, um, what the rum punch does, it gives you an appreciation for flavors. And it shows you that these guys who are mixologists, bartenders, these guys are, are good at what they do, you know, for you to create, take different flavors and put it in a drink and it tastes, it tastes amazing. And you can actually taste each and every single flavor that's in there. Yeah, that for right. me, it's impressive. Uh, did it was a particular standout drink for you? Um, the last one, because it had those, like it had the vodka. Uh, the gin. Rum, 
gin and i was like because that oh, always some i always get attracted by something that's just completely different I, right. all, all of there were quite a few in there that was like that but that one stood out to me and uh, the 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 don the beach one um, right it had the element the myrtle bank yes yeah. it had the element of the uh of the, of the spiced honey yeah i spiced honey with the with the with the, with the rums i'm like okay that's that's different that's different so yeah those two definitely there were others but those two definitely stood out for me yeah well i so i'll i'll finish off it in my opinion is that um i think um uh being biased in terms of uh growing up with the rum punch and, and loving the rum punch i think it is a very underserved drink i think it's a uh, uh I think it can be created in a single serve. I think a lot of bars run away from a rum punch. I am. Uh, I think it's a shame because historically, I think the rum punch has so much to offer. And I think the cocktail industry would not be where it is today without the rum punch. The cocktail industry owes a lot to the rum punch. Um, the, and, and actually, not let me not use the word the rum punch. The punch, right? The cocktail industry owes a massive amount to the punch in terms of learning how to balance flavors. And a, and a well-made rum punch is one of the most perfectly balanced cocktails you can ever have. Yeah. Um, I think the rum punch uh, took the punch to a, to a commercial level. Um, and I think drinking a rum punch gives you a feeling of sunshine. It, it, it gives you that, that nice warm feeling of being on the beach, the, the lovely blue sea. Um, and it's that escapism, which I know um, tiki bars try to replicate like Manny's Lucky Cane and other tiki bars try to replicate in terms of that feeling of escape. Um, so I think the rum punch needs to be more respected. I think it needs to be served as a single serve more often. Um, and I hope that bartenders will look at the rum punch and, and that Dave Wondrick will give you an idea of some amazing recipes. Um, and I know Lizette, you said you've read it. Yeah. Uh, Manny, Manny, did you say you've read it as well? I've read it. Um, yeah. uh, some amazing recipes. You, you, unbelievable what you could do with the rum punch. And that, mm -hmm. uh, for me, a couple of standout uh, recipes was that West Indian rum punch, uh, which used the Madeira and the cognac. Um, mm -hmm. Because I know that uh, those the rum, Madeira, and cognac, when you think about it, were three uh, three alcohols that were very synonymous to the Caribbean back in um, the colonial days. Um, because we, we, the French and, and the English, English bringing rum and the French bringing cognac, uh, were, were big colonizers in the region. Uh, obviously, the Madeira came from the Portuguese, but fortified wines in general were quite, quite commonly consumed by the, the, the upper class in that era in time. And I think that gives an amazing balance towards and, and different notes and complements each other in terms of bringing some structure. And the other drink for me was uh, the Roberto's uh, drink from the Factoria because, like uh, Mark said, uh, I love Olio Sacrum. I think it brings a dimension. And if you've never used Olio Sacrum, you need to start. It brings a completely new dimension to a drink, whether it's a rum punch or any drink. Um, and so for me, the La Factoria one with the Olio Sacrum and uh, the adding of the rosemary and, and the herbs, I thought, actually took it into another dimension. So that's my opinion. If anybody wants a quick final word before we say bye-bye to everybody, because we've run over by half an hour because we love talking. I hope we weren't too long, guys. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you tune in for the next one, which will be announced this week. Um, but um, any final words from anybody before we say bye-bye? Uh, it was a great chat. Enjoyed it very, very much, as always, and I'm looking forward to the next one. So great, guys. Thank you very much. Uh, have a lovely week. Uh, weekend's over in England. Have a lovely holiday, bank holiday tomorrow. Um, it's a public holiday in the UK, by the way. Um, and um, don't ask why. Um, uh, and uh, enjoy your week and enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you, guys. Bye Appreciate guys. you coming on board and spending yeah. your time. All the best. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.